guys, Kuro Blind Wave. I'm Eric. Rick. I'm Calvin. Aaron. And we're back with something a little familiar, but a little different. We've done a couple of these. We're watching Hot Ones from the First We Feast YouTube channel. Uh, this is Conan O'Brien. I believe this was the finale for this season. Mm. Um, and Conan O'Brien for me is, like, I have a very few amount of people that I put on my, like, my idol list. Uh, but there's only one person who I know for sure is on that list. Wait, what? Uh, so he's on your Mount Rushmore? Yeah, I would say so, maybe. <laughs> so I guess, yeah. like, Jancy wouldn't get mad if you... What, is that the list? Yeah, it's it's the... I never considered it until this moment. Oh. It's the pick five, right? Yeah. Yeah, he is quite five. He is quite yeah, tall. I like that. <laughs> That's a good one. I do like how tall he is. But no, I've, I've been watching Conan since I was a kid. I had a, a friend in elementary school. The only bond we had was our love for Conan O'Brien. And it was one of my greatest relationships when I was really young. So uh, I've just been a lifelong fan of his. And now that we kind of had, you know, we had the turmoil of him losing The Tonight Show. And then he came back and he was actually on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. It's the first time he had been in that building for like, I don't know, over a decade. But he came and dominated that show. It was like he's better now than he ever would have been if he stayed on The Tonight Show, you know? Nice. Anyway, I know that he's promoting something new as well, which I am very much looking forward to. But you guys, Conan O'Brien, any experience? I discovered him in the YouTube era. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. way too late for me yep. Yep. growing up. But um, no, since then, like, he's a funny guy. Yeah. I like watching him play video games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like oh. watching him pull a lever. And Me too. <laughs> having Walker, Walker Texas Ranger appear. Uh -huh. No, I've seen clips and stuff, I guess, but sure. not any kind of fandom with it. Just, ah, oh, that's funny. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. You're not on Team Coco? No. Team Coco. I still think they should have been called Coneheads. Yeah. Taken. It's taken. Not that good. Calvin, any? No, yeah, I'm, I think I'm with Rick. Probably not as much exposure as Rick. Yeah. Um, I didn't have TV or the option of watching it late at night, uh -huh. so I've just been trying to catch up. On YouTube, okay. Um, seen a I, bunch of clips, yeah. A few full episodes, and you know his, like you said, his video game series and stuff like that. For me, it's uh, like one of my. I'm, I'm incredibly biased, but one of my favorite YouTube rabbit holes, like whose line is it anyway rabbit hole, where you can just watch nothing for you know nothing but that for two hours. I can do the same thing by just putting in Conan travels, and when he mm -hmm. did a travel segment on the show, it was always the best. But for me, it was especially the stuff when, like, the writer's strike would happen, and he just, he's just so naturally funny. He's incredibly intelligent, but he's such a jester at heart that he plays the fool so well. So I'm looking forward to him on this format because... Uh, You're looking forward to seeing him tortured. Yes, I am, because he's such an interesting person that I think that he will do anything for a joke. Let's see how far he takes us. All right. What's gonna happen? What's wrong with you people? You don't know what real danger looks like anymore. <laughs> oh, is he gonna regret that? Which swing is that on? I don't know, but his eyes are pretty red. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions, even hotter wings. And today we close out season 23 with Conan O'Brien. 23 seasons, that's crazy. Wow. Three decade long run on Late Night. You can keep up with him these days on Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, wherever you yeah, get your podcast. podcast. This is a brand new travel show visiting Conan fans all over the world. It's called Conan O'Brien Must Go, and it's set to release on Max April 18th. Conan O'Brien, welcome to the Close show. Up your Sean, nice yep. Me. I appreciate it. I ask in good faith, how are you around hot sauce before we get started? I grew up in an Irish house. Uh, <laughs> in Boston. I, I never saw a spice until I was about 52 years old. <laughs> so, I'm um, terrible. Okay. Hot food. Oh, I'm I so excited. Grew up on tasteless food. So this is a whole new experience for me. Some new ones I haven't seen. Funky's hot sauce. Yes. If you don't mind, Sean, I'd like to get a quick uh, baseline read. Mm -hmm. uh, I brought my personal physician, Dr. Oh. Arroyo. This is Dr. Arroyo. Hi, how are you? Amazing. Yeah. Hi, nice so, to meet you. Okay. You don't have to talk to him. Just to me. recognize this guy. Um, He's been with him for like 30 center. years. What are we looking at? Nice and pointed. I run a little cool. Yeah. Um, also, you've been my doctor for about 25 years. Yeah, yeah. Where did you go to medical school? Uh, in 1998. Where? Where? Oh, uh, 
out of state. <laughs> out of state. Okay. <laughs> In specific answers. Let's apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Arroyo, oh, he's not the no. best, but he's very affordable. Very affordable. Okay. All right. Get nothing here. <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> is this what you got? I guess this is where you start, right? I don't fear your wings, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bring what you got, okay? So the travel log is taking up. Can I keep these? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Form, yeah. yeah. So the travelogue is taking on so many different forms, from mm -hmm. the anthropological approach of someone like Anthony Bourdain to the thrill-seeking perspective of a personality like Bear Grylls. Yes. How would you define comedy's role in the genre? Like, is it a hack being funny and connecting with new people and cultures? I love travel, and my mission is that you learn nothing about the country. My job is that you know less about the country after I'm done than when I started. So that's why I love this new show, is Max just let us go for it. And uh, we visited a bunch of countries. <laughs> and uh, you're dumber. You're dumber after you see the show. But we had a lot of fun. Was this <laughs> the show on your birthday? Or is that just a charming coincidence? Oh, thank you for doing your research. Um, it was a total coincidence. HBO Max called us. Is it HBO Max or just Max? I think it's just straight Max. I can't get used to it. <laughs> that's not a better name. Anyway, uh, Max I'm sure they're said, happy uh, mm. Max, that really rolls off the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of personal, because it's just like someone's name. You know yeah, exactly. I mean? like uh, Max uh, they said, one. hey, you're, you're going to drop, I think that's what the kids say, <laughs> uh, on April 18th. And I said, hey, that's my birthday. And they went, huh. So I don't think it was anything <laughs> intentional. <laughs> it just happened to be my birthday. Well, happy birthday to you, Cole. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Are you ready to move on here to sauce number two on that note? Yeah, please, because that first one, I got nothing. What's I this? What it. kind of sauce is this? So this one is called Smoky J here. Smoky J. Smoky J. Anything I need to know about this sauce before I bite in? I think the less you know, the better. Okay. Is it right in? Okay. Smoky J. Smoky J. <laughs> I like this so far. <laughs> I am unfazed. Do you mind if I? Yeah, no, go ahead. It's your jacket, have a bunch of... your wings. Thank you. Take ownership from that Thank side you. of the table. Go ahead. How often do you show up on location somewhere, right? You get to a destination, and your first and immediate thought is, how the hell am I going to make this funny? Often. That's 70%. 70% of the time, and what I call it, I talk to my head writer, Mike Sweeney, and I say, you've brought me to a comedy vacuum. There's nothing here. You, there's nothing. Once we were doing a shoot in Finland, and I was in the Arctic Circle, and I was standing on a tundra, and in the distance, about 400 yards away, were some reindeer, and my producers just said, and go. <laughs> and I'm looking around. <laughs> I'm like, what? what am I supposed to do, improv with a sheet of ice? But in those situations, sometimes when you think it's gonna go very badly, it goes well. Sometimes you think, oh my God, I have it made. This is a perfect remote, and you can't get anything. So mm. it's always going to a Vegas craps table. You never know. It's like we go to a convention. I feel that way sometimes. Hmm. Hmm. Again, it's called Haunt Once. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck's going on? This is nothing. I'll remember. You these, got nothing. I'll remember these words. <laughs> God is gonna get no. He's gonna have a hot. This isn't even. I've yet to have any spice at all. And you know what? I've got a little eye watering. I think you're going to teach that's me. that's because you're meeting your idol. I think... <laughs> <laughs> I, I get that from just about everyone in your demographic. Right. No, no, no. Their eyes are up. Yeah, go ahead. There you go. You got three in there. Yeah. So on a late night show, mm -hmm. when you see the host toss a commercial, right? Yep. And then yep. they lean in and they talk to the guest with the mics cut. Yeah. Is that usually like a real chat? And if so, what are some of the go-to It depends on the host. In the old days, back in the days when I was doing it and there was just a couple of us, uh, oftentimes there wasn't much chat. Really not much at all. You know, if you were talking to a letterman, he wouldn't say too much. The other guy, you know. He won't say Jalen's name, right. it's so funny. I always tried to the make other guy. I tried to keep the rhythm going. And sometimes if I couldn't get them interested, I'd try and say something provocative, like I bet you live four more years tops. And <laughs> you could see them get a little rattled and the band would be playing. So I just wanted to <laughs> keep them alert. 
Keep them alert. That's B. Arthur, and I was right. B. Arthur! I was <laughs> right! Four years tops. And it was uh, three years, 11 months. And sands of time. Yeah. Jeez. Well, I'll say this. I know you... Uh, this is important for me to say. I've watched your show. You are a very good interviewer. Thank you. And um, so, without this... I mean, this is fun. I like this. <laughs> and I get why you guys do it. And it's really fun, and it's compelling. But uh, you are a very serious interviewer. You take it seriously, and you ask really good questions. So oh, I, I'm very impressed. He doesn't. He doesn't say that lightly. That's yeah. a compliment. Wow. Yeah, you shut that out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it in. No laughs there. <laughs> what is this called? This is uh, Los Calientes. Very okay. nice. Los Calientes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Verde won't be too bad, probably. Yeah. Doctor Royal. Yes. Sir. They haven't gotten to the oil based stuff. Yeah. It's getting starting to race a oh, little sure, bit. Oh, sure, sure. No, you're, you're just Is that choking. typical? You're just choking. So sorry. I'm no, no, you just feel for the pulse. All right. You've been with me for a long time. But... It's there. It's okay. there. It's very good. I can very tell. inexpensive. I can tell. Yeah. He has an uh, <laughs> office in the desert. <laughs> What do you think is the most uh, annoying trait what the or thing a guest can do when a cat is on a talk show? I think there's a phone thing in it. Can do is tell the audience it's not going well. Mm. Uh, I've seen it happen many times. It's an amateur move. Uh, because the host can do a lot to let people think it's going great, even if it's not. That There are many things the host can do. The host can be enjoying. The host can act a little bit. The host can Jimmy do Fallon things. does that a lot. Audiences want to see a good show. Yeah. They want to see a good interview. And... Uh, I was always amazed when someone would come out and they'd be doing okay and they'd make a couple of jokes and it's fine and then they would just go and they would look right out to camera and they would say, this just isn't going very well, is it? And you could feel, I would look out at the audience, maybe 200 people sitting there and I'd see 200 souls leave 200 bucks <laughs> <laughs> through the ceiling. Because they were, they, they were just told they were not getting a good show. Right. No, that's not show business. Show business is you're getting the greatest show in the world. It's old school. Yeah. I don't case think there's a two. Case of I case of can't eat like ice cream. I, I seriously, I don't think there's a wing on this table that I cannot devour like it's cool whipped cream <laughs> <laughs> on an August afternoon. Okay. You're like a Ric Flair cutting a promo right now. Exactly. Right? That's the energy that I'm putting up. Yeah, you're really Rick challenging Flair. the wings of the Dr. Royal, please, could you step in? My pocket's getting full. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My pocket's getting full. What's <laughs> the most harrowing encounter with wildlife that you can recall from all the times that you had animal experts on the show? Uh, yes. It happened during the uh, Turner phase of, uh, of my career. We uh, had someone who brought a lot of animals on, and one of them was a water buffalo. Massive beast. And uh. I'm standing next to it. I said, well, I don't even know what we do with it. And someone, a producer, just said, well, just hop up on it. I mean, rehearsal mode. So you just do what you're told. Oh, no. And as I'm getting up on it, Andy said, don't get on that. But of course, I never listened to Andy. You got to commit to the So I get up on the water buffalo. And as my ass hits the water buffalo, beast this size, it freaks. It tosses me up into the air. We had it on camera. I go up. And I come down Ugh. on my hip on a cement floor. And as you know, in a studio, cement it's poured concrete so the cameras can roll. So I bounce <sighs> off my hip. Ugh. It really fucking hurt. Water Buffalo makes this bellowing sound, charges, everyone runs away, all the cameramen <laughs> run away, takes out a camera. Camera people are scrambling and slips and falls and then gets up and looks at me. I'm lying on the floor. I jump and I run in the other direction and leap over the talk show couch. I had a hematoma on my hip that was so big I couldn't get my jeans on or off. Oh, so my I like had to cut gosh. me out of my jeans. It was just giant. Damn. And I just, look at him. why? It's because you do a show every day. You get into the let's go, let's go. Yeah. Um, Let's get this thing going. And I'm there, and I'm just thinking about the next thing. And a voice just said, hop on. And I did. False sense of security. Uh, just the rhythm idiot, of the show. Absolute idiocy. But um, I lived to tell the tale. <laughs> and uh, the water buffalo and I made amends. We're good now. It looks like you did this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. What's 
Mm. Reaper. Oh. Yeah, I think that's one of the ones that. That's high coded. I know you might be running out of pockets. No, Thankfully, no, I got you it. do have a lot of them. Yeah, it's okay. We got pockets. <laughs> do you take any kind of perverse pride in the sheer number of hours of television that you've created? I was never that excited about volume. I, it to me, it's whether it's good or not, or you know, and and so to me, it was much more stay focused on. Let's really try and keep trying to make something that's really memorable and will stick around and, and then get back to it. And what I'm interested in is how it looks in the rear view for you. Like, does it all fit neatly into distinct eras or is it all kind of a blur? I would say there are eras. There's the early era in 93 to 95 where I'm uh, in living in sheer terror all the time because I'm waiting for a phone call any second that I've been canceled. So that is a real era. That whole run, Rockefeller Center, feels like an era. All the craziness I went through in whatever, 2010 is a distinct chapter. Mm. Turner is a distinct chapter. Um, getting to do the podcast, which I love. Sitting down and getting to talk to somebody for an hour is such a joy after almost three decades of, that was great, thanks a lot. Okay, we're gonna take a little break. We'll be right back. You know, that, uh, that I loved it but I love this a lot. Different kind of muscle. It's different now, mm -hmm. and I love trying this. And then with this new so much better. Max show coming out April 18th, um, <laughs> I just like that we're really getting the resources to do one of these the way I always wanted to do it. So, uh, yeah, I would say they, they look like very distinct, separate times. Hmm. Oh hey. my God. Now they're getting the hotter ones. Yeah. The Doctor Royal. Open this, please. Multifaceted doctor. Thank you, doctor. You always <laughs> side eyes him. Oh my god, Conan! <laughs> no! No! What's gonna happen? What's wrong with you people? You don't know what real danger looks like anymore! <laughs> Incredible. No. So, my question to you. Is, is there a point when these get warm? Oh <laughs> my god. Anything at all. <laughs> Incredible. You fool. Incredible. Oh, here's a question for you. Yes. Is it true that while writing at SNL that you would sometimes go downstairs to Letterman's 6A studio yeah. and then write material from his desk yes. at the studio? I would sit. They had like a, a covering over his desk to protect it from any asshole. <laughs> and... So we were, uh, our studios were at 9, and I would go down to, uh, he was in 6A, which is the studio I eventually took over, but I didn't know that was going to happen. And I would sit at Dave's desk, and I had Dave's perspective, and I would sit there and I would work on a sketch. And then this crazy situation develops, one in a billion chance, where I get a chance to audition for that show and then get it. But if you had told me that when I was sitting behind Dave's desk as a Saturday Night Live writer, I said, "There's no way." I could also That's amazing. No way ever mm -hmm. that. Charlie Rose show where you eat hot wings. <laughs> but I've been—I would have been wrong both times. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Yeah, you can't predict the future. You just don't know Can what's going to happen. Can only connect the dots looking back, never yeah. looking forward. When you took over that 6A studio, did you uh -huh. see any remnants of the old guard? Were there like pencils stuck in the ceiling or anything? Uh, no, because they put us in different offices, so we were not in Dave's offices, but we had his studio. There weren't remnants, but there were physical remnants. There were people, there were camera people. There was this guy, Bailey, who was a cameraman who had been with Dave the whole time. And so he was our cameraman. And I'll never forget that we kept coming up with these ideas that were much more, involved a lot of running around. I was kinetic, Robert's kinetic, the writers we hired were very kinetic. Oh, I had just turned 30. So all my ideas were, I've got an idea, I start running, and the camera's running with me, and I jump out the window and the cameraman jumps too. <laughs> Bailey, who had been there probably since the 50s and was used to watching, you know, shooting, I don't know, some Edward R. Murrow. Edward R. Murrow <laughs> smoke a cigarette down to the filter. No filter. No filter. It's Edward R. Murrow, goddammit. That's what he was used to. And then suddenly I'm here saying, I've got an idea. Bailey, we're going to put rockets on your feet and you're going to fire you down the hall. How old are you, Bailey? 77. Yeah, it's going to be fun, Bailey. Fun. <laughs> Fun. Like what he's doing with these this hot right. sauce. Oh school. my god, the bomb now. Was it a four-year medical school? It was uh, supposed to be. 
It was when it was supposed to be. be. Never graduate? He's gone. He's gone. Oh, oh no! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! Oh. Come on, man, are we doing this or not? Yeah, no, I'm with Are you. we doing it or not? No. <laughs> he's like, he's becoming the interviewer. If we can't do this! Right, now I really do feel alive. I do feel alive. You're okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you. Yeah. I might hiccup through this yeah. whole thing. Yeah. This one, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I'm feeling it a little bit. <laughs> I'm feeling it. Oh my I'm god. I'm this one. A little tremor. It's just starting to peek through. <laughs> Don't drink the water. I'm feeling I'm a little bit. I can't stop. There's a little bit of a burning, no. but not much. <laughs> oh, He's, no. His hands are shaking. What do you think would be the best? The willpower. Conan O'Brien needs a friend. You, you tried to talk. Yeah. But your lips have been paralyzed, and what I heard was. <laughs> I got that out. I think maybe you're having a problem. No, I don't think so. All right. I think everyone in the studio will agree. <laughs> Which U.S. president do you think would make the best podcast guest on Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend? Do they have to be living? No. Richard not. Nixon. Nixon? Oh, oh my God, it would be fantastic. Oh, man. He's such a comedy figure. When you think about it, a boy's... <laughs> and we could get into water, and then he would try to be funny, like, I've got a funny idea. You know, it would be fantastic. <laughs> the voice alone, I would have to say, probably uh, Lincoln. Can I just take a second and say this is starting to hit? I think no, yeah. It's becoming I manic. Look at it. I don't have a lot of regrets in my career. No! Pouring this onto the wing. Okay. Right. No, he's going to do it. And in retrospect, I bet you it's good footage. No, yeah. It's good, but, it's good TV. Um, <laughs> I'm starting to feel some sensations. And, and you know what, Conan? If you weren't so braggadocious in this front half, I probably would have stopped you from doing that. No, you know? You I would have protected you, you from can't, yourself. You can't stop me from being who I am. <laughs> That's exactly right. To quote my, my hero, Popeye, I am what I am, okay? I said it and Gandhi said it. The, the, and, and Popeye, that is, the, that is who I am. I said it and Gandhi said it. it. And Popeye. And Popeye. How do I do? I have to go 110%. I know, you gotta commit to the bit. Gotta commit it's to the bit. It's not a bit. This is life. This, this show is a bit to you? This show's a Because it's not bit. a bit, it's your show. <laughs> Don't say commit to the bit. This is life. Right, you're You right. gotta grab it by the balls. You're, no, Dr. Uh, you know Royal, would you check on my yeah. friend here? Just get a quick test. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. Not good. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> Anything beyond that? No, he's... Okay, I'll just real... take you at face value yeah. on that. Not yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. He's not a good doc. I've never he's seen anybody take that much bomb. Ever. Do you have a favorite mediocre president? It was a good bit. Uh, <clears throat> well, that's a I was good wondering one. how he'd do. Mediocre. mediocre president? That's so mean. I'm gonna go with Warren Hardy. <laughs> okay? Good looking guy. He was in the Oval Office like three days and he wrote on a note, I am not fit to be president. This job is too hard. <laughs> and to solve matters, he takes a train trip and dies mysteriously because he ate some bad lobster. So you gotta give it up for Warren G. Hardy. Pretty mediocre. Right? Don't you think? No argument there. Yeah, he knew he couldn't do the job and said, you know what, has anyone got some lobster that's been out too long? I want to eat it on a train where there's no refrigeration. That's what they did. 680. Don't do the sauce. This is a big jump. Conan, no. Open. There we go. And a little bit of this on it? Yeah, go. I'll join you at the party. Sound these three stooges used to make when they were doing anything destructive. Everyone watch the three stooges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Money, when I, money. <laughs> mistake, mistake. I like to announce my mistakes up front. Go ahead, dude. He's going this all in. Yeah, you eat that wing, you don't waste it. Mistake every step of the way, intentional. It's on your lips. Oh, come on. Oh, come. Don't get in your eye. Oh. Right, he's getting that. His thumb's oh. really close to his eye. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Someone <laughs> <say that. laughs> He's destroying yeah! 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 I've never felt that yeah, high. Oh, I love it. I love it. Me too. I'm a wreck right here. First oh my god. In years. <laughs> this is to you. Hey, to you. Call the wife. What? Call the wife? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even ask a question. Oh no! God, at this point, what are you gonna do? This is. What's the, what, tell us what we're eating here. It's already on there, bud. This is the last ab experience. 
It's not on there. With they got it. Pepper axe. Incre oh my gosh. I gotta join you at the party. Going out with a bang. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of dad. You're exactly right. There needs to be Look a at his face. To close things out. Look at his nipples. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready? I'm ready. Oh, oh my god. You say this is pure pepper? Mm hmm. Oh my god. So there's nothing here. There's no insulation. There's no safety net. No. Straight concentrated. Pepper Look at him. To the dome. Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> but I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. Oh, oh god. my gosh. What's wrong with me? Why can't I feel? No. <laughs> Is it gonna hit me now? It's gonna hit me soon, right? It's got a build on it. Oh, look at Sean. It's starting to build right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sean is yeah, building. And it's kind of not gonna stop. No, it's not gonna but stop. That's okay. He no, just no, took a swig yeah, of it's it. It's coming back. I know. I know. It's coming I back. Know. We're approaching the the peak of the mountain here. But you start to panic. The news is that's a wrap on our lunch date with the wings of death. We're here about to drop. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm perfectly fucking fine. I'm not you didn't questioning come up that. With one I'm wing not questioning that. that any effect on Conan, because he's here today. Oh woo! Oh woo! If you are crafting a curriculum of a comedy survey Jeez. course. Can you give us one book to make sure that your students understand that the building blocks of comedy are not at all new? What are you gonna read? <laughs> he looks read disgusting. Well. Read well. There's comedy in the Old Testament. There's comedy in the New Testament. You can read all kinds of stuff. Just don't lock yourself in to it's gotta be some comedy from the last 10 years. No, there's great comedy. It's just it sauce long dribbling long all over the table. What's funnier than <laughs> <laughs> Sancho Panza. You know? This is good stuff. The classics are funny. You know? You can watch, read Chaucer's Tales. They're funny. There's funny everywhere. Don't be a snob. Look high and look low. A Mad Magazine is funny. There's funny stuff online all the time. There's no reason for us to try and exclude one category over another. These aren't the rantings of someone who's had some bad chemicals and overdid it to be funny and relevant to people who are at least 50 years younger than him? <laughs> this is a guy who's just being on a show, and it's legitimate. So I say, <laughs> it's legitimate. Sean, you're a great motherfucking host. <laughs> right back. And I'm glad you. I'm here. Oh, and I'm glad we had a great time. And I don't care. I don't care anymore. Wise words from a wise and stable man. Yes, from a man who's doing everything he can to be on the and show that everyone has to tell young wants to be on. Just barely, and now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, this camera, this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. I have a show. It's on Max. They used to call it HBO, but people found that too popular. <laughs> it's Max, because that really rolls off the tongue. And it's a funny show. So it's going to drop with me going all over the world. Check it out, April 18th. That's right. My intestines have turned into acid, and I can still remember the plot. That's a professional. If there was a mic drop, I'd do one, but I didn't do a wing drop. April 18th, check it out. Uh, oh your doctor? my god. Bring your doctor back in. Dr. Royal. <laughs> It's not good. That's okay. dead either. You're not a doctor, are you? I, I should be. Okay. I should be. Should be. All right, thank you. Was he going to tell you what it's at? No, he doesn't even understand the numbers. <laughs> it, it's up two degrees from when we started the show. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. That's the info yeah. I was after. Yeah, you're running oh. a fever. I love how... You ruined me, but saved your suede I, jacket. Well, I was literally, I literally just I know, I know, I know, I know. I, trust I me, literally I love that jacket off. and I do not want to get into it. <laughs> you, you know the I jacket. I admire a guy who hosts hot ones and wears beautiful suede. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Man, that's, I thought it was going to be the exact opposite. Because well, he said he grew up in an Irish household with no spice. 
Very true. <laughs> yeah. He, went, he made sure he ate all of them. I was surprised, though, he took a drink of the dab. Ooh. Oh, my God. Everything else, I was like, all right, he's doing this played up. But I figured by the time he got to the dab, like, even just yeah. adding as much as he did, sure. I'm like, all right, that's probably going to be yeah. enough. And that's a good bit. Because the dab's always been one of those where, like, a lot of people just get that one, and then yeah. like, this is so much. I, I know. Can. Man. Yeah. He, he did use the milk liberally, but yeah. But I I think it's allowed given the quantity. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> like he was knocking back sips. He was of manic at the end. He was like <laughs> moving back and forth. You could just see him in pain, and he like wanted to. He's waxing philosophy. <laughs> he wanted to not be in his body. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I felt that feeling. Wow. I did see a. It was a tweet or a headline or something saying he had like a breakdown after the episode. A breakdown? <laughs> hmm. I mean, I he's part it. of that old school show business generation and he will do anything. I liked what he said, like, it's not a bit. Like, this, this is, is why people like me. This is what I do. I, I live hard. Yeah. I live life. <laughs> I like this little doctor he brought in, the little, the little Dr. Arroyo. Right <laughs> where did you go to school? 1998. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, where? 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 Out, out of state. Out, out of state. <laughs> out of which state? What do you mean? Are you a doctor? I should be. <laughs> I should be. That was funny. That it's guy, I recognize him. Like, that's the cool thing about Conan. Like, he just keeps people with him all the time. Like, the people that are with him right now were with him in the late night show. They went to TBS with him. They went, you know, they follow and they're loyal. And he just has such great chemistry with them. He's comfortable with them, so yeah, he brought that guy on. I've seen him in Conan sketches my whole life. Dr. Aurora. I liked his Buffalo or Wildebeest or whatever it was story. Oh, <laughs> the King Buffalo. Because, I mean, that's so crazy. The water buffalo is right. Like, you you did this. Yeah. Not only am, did you get on me when I mean, you shouldn't be, it's your show. You're the reason I'm here. <laughs> he turned and he looked at me. <laughs> I can imagine, like, Ari being thrown off and you're a hip and you're yeah. like, oh, you know, like, wow. what? Shit. Run to him with his couch. But yeah, I mean, there at the end where he said, like, this is the show you have to go on to get the kids. So he did what he had to. Yeah. It was like trying to get the attention of kids 50 years 50 old years younger than, than me. Than me. Yeah. yeah. Sure. No, I get it. I mean, this this is how once has become a very popular, uh, yeah, like interview talk show thing, and it's pulled in some big names over the years. I mean, they said absolutely. what twenty three seasons was? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This wrapping up here, so like, people. there's some yeah, there's yeah. some really good interviews that they've had over the years, but yeah, it's just grown. So it's yeah, it's got a following, and there's a lot of people that like to watch it, and this is. Probably a good way of trying to get his new show out there. On I love the way he was like oh, HBO Max. His HBO was too popular. You had to just get rid of it. Put in Max arrows on the tongue. They can't be happy about that. <laughs> He's there. Everyone to hates for them. it. Yeah. It makes no sense. No, it's we, like we X. flag off on it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's, I mean, why like would a, you get rid of one of the best brands? If ever? Apple just is like, you know what? It's just Plus, or it's just TV, yeah. or you know whatever it is. Like they just get rid of like. Yeah. Like why'd you get rid of the brand people know and just leave? This no one knows what Max is. Cinemax? That's different. <laughs> so yeah, it's just silly. I don't know. I don't know why they wouldn't leave it. HBO That's a good Max. point. You should, you should uh, X that out on X. Mm. Well, Nintendo kind of did the same thing where they didn't want it being called the Nintendo. So instead of like Super Nintendo, it became the GameCube, mm. which then sold very poorly. Yeah, sure. Because they lost the brand recognition, right? Mainly because the PS2 came out and killed it. Well, maybe. Sure. Yeah, but then those guys knocked on the door and said, we would like to play. <laughs> so weird discs and stuff they used. Yeah. You know? I'm in full agreement. I mean, the guy did it for 30 years, but full agreement about the talk show format, especially when it comes to interviewing celebrities. It's just, you compare it to the podcast format. It's just, it's not worth it. Yeah, like, it's it's a dead medium. It's completely dead. I feel yeah. like. Yeah. I mean, all the late night stuff I always see now is always just clips online, and I never, almost ever watch the interviews. It's always just like no. a monologue maybe, but primarily like a skit or something that they'll do. But, I mean, I, I've listened to many episodes of Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. The best one is Harrison Ford, because Harrison Ford actually seems like he's having a good time. Which and is I've rare. I've never seen that on a Harrison Ford. He doesn't interview. usually. Yeah. Anywhere. Like I said in the reaction, but Conan O'Brien saying you are a good interviewer is high praise because he's one of the best. He's one of the. I wouldn't even say he's one of the best. He just 
he's a kind of a, I won't use the word snob, but he has a very high opinion of what an interview should be. I feel yeah, like. he, he treats it seriously. Yeah. 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 He, I mean, he said it. It's like, this is Charlie Rose with hot sauce to get that dialogue going. But hmm. that was that was crazy. No, it was uh, not being a big Conan fan, like the, the <laughs> ways he went about eating uh-huh. his wings. I like that he just, <laughs> he's like, can I keep this? Yeah. He put it in his pocket. It made me think about being in Little Caesars when I was working register. I'd yeah. eat pizza or I'd eat cheese bread, mm-hmm. and like the bell would ding, and I couldn't. I didn't want to set it down somewhere. Like I was gonna get dirty or lose it. And I can't take it out with me. I would just shove it in my pocket, <laughs> go out there, wait on somebody, come back, pull it out. Like my manager, like, did you just pull cheese bread out of your pocket? I'm like, yeah. yeah. And I took my. You don't have it. <laughs> Never leave the home without it. Wow. That's cool. The part they talked about going to uh, Finland and being like in a comedy wasteland. Again, that's my favorite part about him. Is like. He just goes out and he becomes the fool, becomes the jester, and that's why I'm kind of excited for this show. Uh, having him do that internationally across language barriers, I think, is going to be super interesting. Mm-hmm. But my favorite stuff is, like, just go watch, like, Conan goes to Taco Bell headquarters. Conan goes to, uh, anytime Jordan Slansky, which is one of his producers, is on, it's comedy gold. Uh, Conan tries to find out which... Uh, person stole his assistant's mug. Like there's these all these great pieces of of improv comedy that like they just have to put him somewhere and say go. And like you said, seventy percent of it sucks. And if that's the case, there must be so much out there unused because there's so much out there. I'm sure. Play. Yeah. They didn't even air the bull. They didn't air the bull. They yeah. Got the footage. They said there's footage of it. Yeah. yeah. There's probably right. a lawsuit in there somewhere. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Well, I hope you guys no. enjoyed this one. Uh, it was fun. Yeah. And not knowing much of, of Conan, were you entertained? I mean, yeah. Like I said, watching him, like, go through the process. And up until, like, a point, I was like, okay, now we're getting the hot ones. Yeah. Like, I understand him just being like, yeah. there's nothing happening here. And him adding more, I'm like, okay. But then when he took a drink out of, like, the third or fourth hottest one, and then doing it again for the dab. Yeah. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. man, I don't I know. know. I, the bomb. I, I watched the one with um, David, David Blaine. Blaine. And David Blaine, you know, he does that thing where, like, I don't, he might have trained for this, but he just... He might have went, you know, at one point. Yeah. So he was able to take it all in stride. And so was Conan, but through sheer force of will. <laughs> right? Like, David Blaine with Sasuke, he's Naruto. <laughs> sure. Oh. Yeah, gee, I'm, I'm make it through. Yeah, he made it through. That's amazing. I feel like the only missed opportunity is the doctor, the interviewer, should have said to him at the end there, you're only going to live for four years <laughs> because of this. Yeah. <laughs> I give you four more years, tops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to get them off their... Oh, it's so funny. All right. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if another Hot Ones pops up that we're super interested in, you never know. Maybe we'll do one. If you have one that is a favorite of yours, maybe put it down in the comments. And some other fun things. You never know when those are going to pop up. So, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you check out blindwave.com where you can recommend TV shows and movies that we should be reacting to. And uh, we also have early access, full length, and more over there. Just click the link right over here or down in the description below. Yeah, right there. And click the link.